Praise God, He is born. Yes. We have hope because of Jesus. I say we got hope because of Jesus. Yes. That is our hope. That is why we celebrate. The Christmas season is a time to celebrate. Hope has come. Praise the Lord. We would like to welcome you to the crossing this morning. We exist connected to God, to others, and to your purpose. We'd like to give a little shout out this morning to all of our Facebook followers and all the ones that watch us on Facebook. We'd also like to give a shout out to the churches in Kenya, to Jason and Jen in Cincinnati, to the Mars in Jackson, Ohio. Listen, wherever you are, whether you're here or in one of our other campus locations, we're here to worship. We're here to serve the Lord. So whatever's on, whatever you're thinking about, whatever's on your heart, just set it aside this morning. Let's worship the Lord. Let's give Him praise. Let's join the worship team. And let's sing unto Him. Let us pray. Father, this morning, we love You and praise You. Lord, I, I want to thank You this morning to see all of my children in church. What a gift. Father, I just pray that you bless us together today. Lord, as we worship, as we think about the season that we're in, it's time to celebrate. And Father, I pray that you bless Dr. Ray this morning as he speaks. Father, anoint his words with your spirit. Father, bless the worship team as they sing, as they lead. Help us, Father, to be focusing on you. Help us, Father, to lift up our voices to you. Have your way today, Father. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this season. Most of all, thank you for salvation. In your name we pray this morning. Amen. We were your mission team to Kenya. And um, as we promised last week, we wanted to give you a report. Okay? And so we have a few pictures that we're going to show and a couple short videos. And... Um, just to let you know a little bit, um, Will, his um, main purpose, main responsibility on the on the um, on the trip was that of an, an encourager and a teacher and an inviter, and he did amazing. Uh, I, I tell you, the encourager part. Our first meal on the field, we were out in the middle of. Um, a city and they found a chicken and they 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 cooked the chicken for us and i felt honored and i was trying to eat this chicken and i promise you this it was like the world's most tough chicken that's ever been okay i i was chewing and and, and if you can gnawing on this chicken to get a piece of meat off the uh, off the bird and um we're sitting there in front of the guest and Will looks over to me and he said, this is the best chicken jerky I've ever had. <laughs> and I said, wow, I mean, if you can get something good out of what we're, this, that's every single thing that happened. He was able to find the silver lining. And Jonathan led in worship and he was also uh, one of the teachers and he blossomed, and you'll get to see a, a couple of pictures of him uh, uh, worshiping. Just a little quick side note. Um, we discovered that if we pulled out our phone during worship or during preaching or anything like that, then whatever was, if the Word of God was being preached or if he was being worshiped, it stopped, and immediately the crowds came to, to us um, if we had our phones out. And so we had to stop that. Um, after just one day, we realized that's wrong uh, because the person up there worshiping or, or speaking um, loses the audience as soon as one of us. Now, others could bring out their phones, and it didn't, didn't seem to bother. So we've got some, some pirated video of one, one where I'm hiding behind a little thing, and I've got my phone out, and, and um, you can barely see some stuff. But um, uh, So that's why a lot of people, why don't you get more videos of, of you know, the teaching? Is the well, we had to stop that, okay? So basically what we're going to do is we've got some videos here um, and some pictures, and we're just going to throw them up there and talk about them, okay? And um, 
Comment to Swally. Do you have any questions? Okay. So if you have questions, um, um, just shout them out. Unless your name is Kelly, then raise your hand. Okay. I see how it is. Instantly. Okay. Um, so uh, just didn't even raise her hand. Yeah. Didn't even raise her hand. Just boom. That's how it's gonna. I know, right? I know. I know. So if you have any, if you need anything, you just ask because we're here to report to you. So you let us know what you want to talk about. So the first picture is, oh, wait a minute, back up. Uh, people asked us, what, what did you eat? Well, Jonathan ate nothing but French fries. Not true. <laughs> Every night. French that fries. is true. That is true. Every day. <laughs> French fries. Now, during the day, if they brought us rice and beans, he, he would eat whatever they brought us. That is true. But if I get to pick. <laughs> yeah. And so the French fries cost uh, 20 cents for a whole plate of French fries. Yeah. Yeah. And that was with all of the uh, tomato sauce that you could, uh, you could have also, uh, not ketchup. It was like a tomato juice. Um, that they used, okay, but uh, but uh, that little bit that comes out of the bottle if you don't shake it up, it's a bottle of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we were worried about if Will would eat, but Will will eat anything that doesn't move. <laughs> anything, absolutely. And uh, I I purposed in my heart to to watch what Will eat so that he would not have stomach issues and I <laughs> yeah yeah it didn't work out so well for me but it worked out great for Will uh, God really blessed him okay now they asked us where we stayed we get a lot of that and so there's the ocean resort that we stayed at we're in Kenya there's no ocean in Kenya <laughs> and they lied about everything else too by the way <laughs> They said we'd have electricity and water. Yeah. We did. <laughs> At one hotel we had water. <laughs> At another we had electricity. Sometimes. Sometimes. If we went down there and turned on the generator, <laughs> we could, and the generator was as big as the sound booth back there, and uh, we would turn it on to get Wi-Fi. And the security guard was like, that's, that's too expensive for you to get Wi-Fi. And I said, no, I need to talk to my wife. I don't care. <laughs> So I called my wife and she said, I'm shopping. Can we talk later? <laughs> True story. <laughs> True story. That's what we turned on so I could talk to you. Yes. But you were shopping. I feel some better. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and um, anything else about our accommodations for now? Okay. There you go. That's us in, in my bedroom. And um, I had a bedroom, and Jonathan had a bedroom, and Will had a bedroom. But Will just kept letting people sleep in the bedroom with him. Just constantly. People would show up, and they would be in bed, in the bedroom, would not in the bed with Will, but in the bedroom with him. Woke up one morning, there were three dudes in a twin bed. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. We had a good time, though. Uh, this was the first time that we ever had, uh, that we went to Kenya and we actually had uh, beds. So that was good. We had, um, we had a, a ceramic floor in both hotels. And uh, the hotels were kind of expensive. We got the top of the line hotels, um, $12 a night. Yeah. And um, uh, had a TV. And yeah, no TV stations, but you know, no, no, had, no power, no power, <laughs> no TV stations. But, but it was there. Yeah, and it was kind of interesting. So, um, is there a way I can see? Oh, these monitors are out, Heath. By the way, um, yeah. But, I mean, right, so I let's can introduce see you. On that one, yeah, let's introduce you to some of the people that we're with. This guy's name is George Wafula. Our goal, our ultimate goal, is to raise up leaders who don't need us okay and um, Pastor Moses wants to plant churches in Uganda well I'm on the board of the Kingdom Footprint Ministry and they have a ministry in Uganda so I contacted the leader of our ministry in Uganda his name is George Wafula 
And George came and met with us for a whole day and met with Moses and all of his leadership and met with us. And they're only three hours apart from where he is in, in Uganda to uh, Kenya, right there on the border, both of them. And so they're three hours apart. And so George has a theological center to give free training to pastors that go through our initiation process. Somebody say praise the Lord. Isn't that amazing? If they go through our training process, George said he'll give them free theological training. And uh, George is a, is a good Baptist man and a fine guy. And so we put them. George is not exactly tall. Um, and uh, the, the other picture we took, he, he looked around and he goes, I don't like this picture. And so I said, well, let's take another one. And so we gave you that one. We, we also ministered with a guy named Frank. Frank has been with us for six years, guys. He's been with us the entire time that we've had um, our ministry in Kenya. And um, y'all jump in here. Will, tell them about Frank. Frank was an awesome guy. He helped us from everything, travel. Um, I would go to sleep at night, and I would wake up to him shining my shoes. He was that kind of guy. He put himself out for us. He put himself in some dangerous situations with some money, and, and but he put us before him. He was an awesome man. You're the man, Frank. I know you watch this now because we. Sh <laughs> yep. And um, Frank has a business. Frank is a, is a church planner, but he supports himself through a business, and um, his business is washing cars, and so. Um, his machine broke and needed repair. And so on the last night we were there, um, we decided that we would um, become part owners in a wash, uh, a car wash uh, in uh, Kenya. And so we paid to have his machine uh, repaired and he is up and running. And so um, you now part owners in a uh, car wash. Okay, it didn't cost you any money though. Um, I get in trouble by saying that. You know, everything that my wife and I do, let's just say we do it through the name, the crossing. Okay, so Shinov and I are part owners, but y'all are too. Y'all get fifty percent of what we get. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Frank had never owned a suit ever in his entire life, and so Shinov and I bought him a suit. And that's the one he chose. And uh, I said, your first suit is purple? He goes, oh, it's got to be. <laughs> hey, man. So shirt, suit, shoes, everything. And I said, what about the tie? Well, never mind. Okay. Um, this is an interesting picture. Uh, the one on the left is Jonathan. The one on the right is Pastor Moses. Who do y'all think the guy in the middle is? <laughs> I, the first time I saw Will without his hat on, we were in Africa. And I was like, who, who is that? <laughs> I had to look twice. I was like, there's another Mazungu, and I, I don't know who it is. And I was like, that's, that's Willard. That is Willard. Come to find out in Africa, wearing a hat inside church is not acceptable. And so Will took off his hat, something he has never done here. Amen? <laughs> None of you have ever seen him without a hat, have you? Uh, Juanita has. <laughs> yeah. So um, before we go on to the next one, you said a word there, Mazungu. Mazungu. I know some y'all know what that means, but to clarify, Mazungu is a word over there. It, it's used endearingly. It means literally English. It means cracker. It means white guy. <laughs> and so you'll just have everybody shouting. Kids in particular love it. Mazungu, Mazungu, because. We're weird over there. Uh, so that, that word Mazungu means somebody like us. And speaking of Mazungu. Here we are, deep in the African desert forest. <laughs> and we've just come across a wild Mazungu. Now, this is not his natural habitat. He is not a native species. So he is exploring and looking for things to see, to eat. 
We're gonna follow him. By the end of this trip, I'm gonna wrestle him. <laughs> but you must be very careful. Because if he spots you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Crikey, he's a big one. <laughs> oh, he spotted us! He get spotted us! Get it! Danger! Get it. Danger! Danger! Get it! 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 Get our tour guide that we were with at the moment got out of the van and threw the contact a little time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. We yeah. had some fun. We had some fun. And that Mazungu was elephant hunting. <laughs> Trying his best to get an elephant. So there's, there's some of the fun things. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, I've got to set this up. I don't know how to go back. Oh, I went way back. Um, this next video... Um, we we took over scarves and ties and clothes, and this is how they they did it. Such an orderly way, an orderly fashion. Um, the ladies lined up first. Amen. That was kind of cool to receive their scarves first. So they got in an orderly line and came through, and um, got one scarf at a time. Then the um, the men came through to get their ties. And um, Pastor Moses has a, a a son whose name is Favor. And uh, uh, that's my that's my boy Favor with his tie. He's uh, during worship, and he's got his tie on, and he stood there during worship with his tie. So I thought that was I thought that was absolutely priceless. What we were over there doing it was during the day. This was at a worship service, but during the day, um, for the first uh, half of the day, we we talked, and uh, we talked uh, twelve principles of church planning and um, this is Jonathan actually teaching about uh, the armor of God and then we would take a break and have a, a crusade out in the public and so um, I don't know what to say um, other than I got to see this Will up there preaching Amen. oh my so <laughs> wow I wasn't preaching, by the way. I was just talking to some really nice people. <laughs> that's preaching. <laughs> no, that's not normal preaching. <laughs> and so um, uh, the thing that I like about this, you finally caught it. There you go. They're really not normally nice. Um, is um, Will was kind of worried about his, his, his role on the team, and man, was it ever awesome just to uh, to watch him get out of his comfort zone. He said, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do any public speaking. And then it, by the end of the week, I mean, he was ready to go. Here's another thing that Will did all the time. Juanita said that she wanted him to bring back a boy. Will had, every time he'd walk out in public, kids would run up to him, and they'd go, Baba, Baba, which is his father. And Will just couldn't stop it. He'd reach down and pick him up. At the end of the day, we try to find the parents. <laughs> <Very sorry. laughs> they often would hide <laughs> and let Mazungu have the kid. <laughs> and Mazungu took care of kid. All he had a kid on his hip almost the whole time. It was priceless. Um, this is the bootleg video. Uh, I, I took this without people watching, but uh, we're just out on the street, just preaching. And to pre before I'd preach, they would draw a crowd by, by worshiping. And that was one of the, I got to where I knew that song. Because that song lasts about 45 minutes. <laughs> and, and folks would come from everywhere when that song started playing. Um, we got pretty tight. We found water. <laughs> we were celebrating. Here's some water. I mean, literally. We're like, that's what I hear water. <laughs> Toward the uh, end of the week, Will found a construction project and literally went and asked if he could work. 
And those folks let him come on the job site and go to work. Oh, and let me say too that Kenya is the easiest place to get some kind of a degree. Because <laughs> I went to Kenya and I became a pastor, an architect, um, doctor, theologian. <laughs> theologian. Yeah, I just I got all kind of titles tacked on me just by following these guys. <laughs> it was great. I was an honorary everything. <laughs> <laughs> That is, <laughs> that is very true. Very true. <laughs> I like this one because it's uh, there. That guy up front is taking a selfie with all the kids, and so Dad snuck in the back. <laughs> he got the selfie, and they didn't know he was there until after. <laughs> I wondered what, because you sent me that one. I'm like, what is going on? I thought it was funny. So that is. So I took a picture of you sneaking into a picture. <laughs> <laughs> the Mazungu photo bombed the kids. <laughs> yes. Jonathan ran to the top of our hotel and took some pictures. Just some slice of life. Just the, the, a lot of people asked what it was like over there, so I took some pictures. This is my favorite picture from the whole trip because this is my two favorite ministers ministering how they minister. That was way too many ministries. Um, but you can see in the bottom left here we've got Will. And what Will did whenever Dad was preaching or people were worshiping is he would just go out on the street and as people walked by he would just say hi. And try to shake their hand. And everybody's, you know, I mean, what would you do if a random guy just, hi, how are you? Half of you would shake their hand just out of reflex. And that's what a lot of these people did. And he would just start up a conversation and just invite them to stay. And uh, while he's doing that, Dad's over there preaching. I think that's the Jesus sermon. Because <coughs> Dad came up with a sermon and he asked us for ideas. And we were like, well... Jesus. Let's just do Jesus. <laughs> well, they told me I was going to preach, and I was like, when? They said, here in a few minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have opportunity, we'll preach. And then I looked at them and said, what do I need to preach about? And they said, uh, Jesus. So <laughs> for 45 minutes, I preached about who Jesus is. So, so I, I really like this picture. I think that, this is cool. That, that's a good one. I, I wondered about that one, too. Will found his, found his place. There it is. It's a nut. He's standing out there. And you can see in the foreground here, Jonathan has his phone out. So here comes somebody to, to get in on the pictures. But that's what Will did. What a cool ministry. 8,000 miles. What are you going to do for Jesus? Well, I'm just going to stand in the middle of the road. And everybody's going to stop and talk to me. Because I'm a tall, old, white dude. <laughs> Use what you've got. <laughs> and it worked out awesome. And I mean, you you were like the star. Everybody wanted to get, get pictures with the uh, old white dude. I mean, not only is he white, but he's old and tall. It was awesome. It was awesome. This, I uh, I know what this... Slice a lot. Yeah, I, but you remember what's at the yes, end of I that? Yes, I wasn't going to talk about that, but we had to watch Oh, uh, <laughs> when you when you walk down this hall, that's where you had to go after you had lunch. Several times after you had lunch, <laughs> down at the end of that hall, oh my soul! There were lizards that rolled over on their back, <laughs> dying because they accidentally walked down that hall. <laughs> oh yes, it's not for the faint of heart. I, it's a tough, tough place to live, and this is where they normally live. They didn't live in the $12 a night hotel because that's one week's salary. One week's salary. And, um, and um, we had the opportunity. We could have all stayed in the same room, but I said, for $12, I'm, I'm not staying with Will or John. <laughs> and... And they literally couldn't understand it. They could not understand it. And they said, don't you love your son? Not that much. <laughs> <laughs> it's $12. 12, twin bed, $12. Or he could have his own twin bed for $24. Two weeks pay, and he gets his own bed per night. Okay, I'm good with that. They could not 
conceive that. And over and over and over. And they had to change the reservations because they made reservations so there would be people there to work. And uh, they had to change the reservations because they did not understand why we didn't all want to stay in the same room and sleep together like they did. Because it's $12 a night. And I'm like, I know. I don't like them. <laughs> Do I? Will snores. The whole world knows Will snores. Yes. Yes. I didn't want to sleep with Dad because for some reason he is a mosquito magnet. Mm. And so his room sounded like a war zone. My net had holes in it and I didn't get a bite. <laughs> he slept with two mosquitoes for a week <laughs> and didn't get a bite. There were mosquitoes near me and I broke out. It literally did sound like... And I'm like... Sleeping in my tent, <laughs> literally used a bottle of DEET, like 400% DEET, and just poured it out. Still, still ended up getting bit. You couldn't walk into his hotel room without getting a little dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Hey, just wonder what the plan Moving. is for today. <laughs> we we uh, ministered in different areas. The uh, area that we've been showing you mostly is a place called uh, Kiminini, and it is the upscale area of, um, uh, of within, within an hour, it's one of the um, highest places. As a matter of fact, it was kind of funny. Um, on, our, on Monday, I told Frank, I said, tomorrow I'd like to go walking and show Will some of the countryside um, because he's, all he's seen is the commercial area, so let's go walking. And so he took us on about an hour and a half walk and it was some of the nicest homes I've ever seen. Will's going, man, I could live there. And I'm like, this is not the experience I wanted him to have. Ruined. Um, ruined. He is ruined. It's like when I took Jonathan bass fishing in a, uh, in a church member's pond where you could walk across the water on bass. He threw out, caught a four-pound bass, his first cast, and said, oh, well, I have to never do that again. That's it. too easy. Um, I, I, we ruined Will because literally... These were some of the nicest homes, and they had, it was beautiful. And that's in uh, Kiminini. That's where we literally planted 18 churches last week. Okay? This is in a place called Matisse. This is where we went six years ago. This is where it all started. And um, it's, it's bad, folks. It's bad. This, these are the best houses in that area. And that's the main road. That is the road. Yes. And um, in one day we had three wrecks. We ran over a motorcycle. We ran over a guy. And I ran over the mountain. Um, into. Ran into, into the, the mountain. Not over it, but into it. We rolled over it after. Yeah. <laughs> and um, this, is, this is where a lot of our work is right now. And um, this is where Moses is stationed, Pastor Moses. He's there and he's dealing with people that... The, uh, the average offering is right at $3 for their average weekly offering. And um, well, there was this one girl that was dancing during worship and she had on a pair of flip flops and uh, she broke her flip flops. So I told Moses, I said, Moses, I. I've got to get that girl a new pair of shoes. And he goes, really? You want to get her a new pair of shoes? And I said, yes, I've got to get her a pair of shoes. So we went to the, to the store, a, a fancy store. We went in there, and uh, they went shopping, and, I, and they came back, and they told me it was 19,000 shillings, which is 20 bucks. And I'm like, $20 for a pair of shoes? And uh, he said, these are the best shoes that they make in all of Kenya. And and she can have these shoes the rest of her life. And I knew that's the kind of shoe you wanted to buy. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to buy flip-flops, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here's $20, and I'm going to go outside and feel bad. Um, I just complained about buying a $20 pair of shoes and, you know, ridiculous. I'm so selfish. And um, come to find out, her name is Faith, which is my daughter's name, Kara Faith. And she was an orphan. Her mom and dad uh, died, and um, she's a ward of the church. 
And I'm like, really? Really? Just pour it on. Keep going. And he's like, oh, there's more stories like that. And I was like, no, no, I can only no. And um, she lives there um, uh, by the church out back underneath the shed. Not the shed. What do they call it? The overhang. Mm. And after church, they found out Will was in construction. Go ahead and tell the story, Will. Well, um, Sylvia. Yep. Sylvia came to the pastor and she said, I've got a problem just down the road. Um, maybe you could take a look at this. She has a school. And the school, you could probably explain what the government's doing with the schools, but if they're not up to grade, they're tearing them down or shutting them down. So her idea was that maybe we could come in, tear that down and build her a new one in a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not what I do. Um, we could do that, but that would take some time and money. But she just wanted to show us what she was going through. And, uh, and the kids are, are just fantastic. And over there, we have a universal language here that a lot of the world uses or are taught. And she teaches those kids how to speak somewhat English. And um, they have nothing. I mean, they have nothing. My heart goes out to them, but there was no way we could meet that need at that time. But, but you guys pray for those guys. There's a lot of stories like that there. But they were awesome. And they, they're just the friendliest, nicest people. Just want to be a part of us and know them. But, you know, we just couldn't meet that need. Um, if there was some way that we could take that information to someone to get them help, but, you know, that's over my pay grade. I don't know how to do that, but we need to pray for them. There are more pictures. Are there more pictures of this? There's a bunch of pictures. Yeah, we've got... Yeah, pictures inside of those rooms because it's the picture I'm looking at right now that doesn't do it justice. It's it's crumbling. That whole place is falling apart. We've got pictures inside and yeah, it's just it's made of mud, sticks and mud, and it's all coming apart. But um, these you know people don't have anyone, and um, she just reaches out to them and, and teaches them and and tries to give them a place, maybe a meal, and, and but because of the condition of the place, the government's going to shut it down. And I don't know, can you add anything to that? Well, this was on a Sunday afternoon, so only the kids who followed us there were there, but she teaches um, every day between 200 and 250 kids. Every day. Well, they're on the English uh, school system, which means they have to test every every couple of years, and that's the only test they take. And um, so they test to see if they continue in their education. And um, so all kids have to test in order to get into first grade. And so that's what she does. Is she, she tries to get them... Um, before they turn five, educated enough. Now, these kids live in the slums. Um, a lot of them are orphans. And she's just trying to get them so that they can pass the entrance exam into uh, first grade. And um, then they take that one, and they take another one in the fifth grade. And I think it's like every two or three years after that, maybe it's eighth grade, and then like that um, uh, Frank's sister was taking her exam. Um, and it's about a two-week exam, and that decides whether or not she gets to go 
to uh, ninth grade and um, she came over one morning and we were studying together uh, because she got up at like six o'clock to study for this for this exam and um, she had some questions and I told her some English I don't know if it's the English they they know but I told her what I know uh, but um, these uh, this lady um, does this and of course there's no pay you got to understand that these are this is the slum so there's no pay and she just does that because she teaches and wants these kids to go Where they get their material? it's mud and sticks no, I'm talking about the teaching material. no there's no teaching material yeah it's cloth they've written up and hanging up i've got some pictures of it i we can show those later um, or I can find it. one of the pictures i have is of a picture of a, um, a kid um, they got to actually draw and um, he drew um, the sacrifice of children to to the god to to please the god That's, I mean that they were asked to draw about their experience and so that horrified me but I have the pictures and they put them up to, to advertise it the testing that they do is that provided by the government? yes in order to get into the government school you have to pass the, these tests and so these kids would have to travel somewhere well there's a, actually a school in Matisse uh, there's, uh, I mean, from right here, um, it's just around the corner, which is... That does not mean what you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> they, oh, it's just around the corner. That's, Everything is in walking distance if you have enough time. <laughs> yeah. And so there's an actual school, that, the, a government school that they would go to. Then there's several private schools, but these kids would, would uh, qualify for the government school. And it's within walking, and they walk uh, to the school. But they have to get in before they can go. It's not like here where every no child left behind. It's like you're left behind unless you do it. And the teachers have no incentive. We're not even testing this year. We're testing, you'll be tested five years from now. That's the English method of and if they go through the system and they teach and, and they learn, they make it. If they don't, they don't. They just become street children or go to work for their parents. Did the majority of them make it to school or the majority of them missed week? Excuse me? Did the majority of them make it to school? You know, actually the majority of them don't make it as far as living. That's the tough part. The 18 is the median age for all of Kenya. Fifty percent, almost 50 percent don't make it to 13. And if they can make it to 13, the odds are very strong they will live to be in their 20s. That's why an old guy. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, they couldn't believe he was so old. <laughs> He's very old, and so that's the that's the. And now remember, six years ago, remember this, or let me remind or inform some of you. Six years ago, when we went for the first time. They did not allow children in church. When we went the second time, Jonathan saw that. He left the church building because they had switches keeping kids out. Their theory was, if we don't tell them the gospel, they'll go to heaven. But if we share the gospel with them, they'll go to hell. Somebody had taught them that. Okay? 
And so they refused to teach kids unless they were over 12 years old the gospel. Because somehow or another, 13 is a magic number. Not in the Bible. None of that is true. Okay? None of that is true. So he climbed a pile of garbage and preached the gospel and saw over 500 kids come to Christ, which created a crisis for the leaders. What do we do? Well, Moses said, let the little children come unto me. Amen. I showed him that passage and blew his mind. So now in Moses' church... The little kids are everywhere. I mean, it's everywhere. And they're up on the stage. I mean, yeah, is that up there? They're, they're everywhere. I'm here to tell you that's a cultural revolution that, that, that um, in large part was started by Jonathan. So this lady wanting to teach them, she's doing it for free. There's not a market for it. Okay, not in Matisse, not in the slums. And so this is big. We got to see just how big it was. We need to move and see what's next. Oh, yeah. there you go. Next picture is the kids up on the stage <laughs> during worship. I, that picture blows my mind from the first time we went till now. Kids are not only welcome, but they're on the stage during the worship. Oh, by, by stage, I meant a, a, a higher mud platform than the others. And that's some hard mud. They have beat that mud down. Water doesn't soak into that. Um, of all, never mind. We'll talk about that later. There's an elephant. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it died or I turned it off. Oh, it died. We got just a little bit left. Now, this was a, a picture from the plane. This was coming into Africa. Uh, I, I took this for two reasons. Uh, one, because I just think it looks cool from the air. Just the, that's what the landscape looks like from that high. Uh, and you can see that that's a whole lot of green because everything's farmland. Uh, but I also took it because uh, it's the same leaving as it is coming. And I wanted a reminder of, of a trip. And so th this one was more personal, but I, I thought I'd include it just to show y'all. That's what it looks like, and that, that's what it feels like when you're there. It's, it's, it's wild and crazy, and God is doing some awesome stuff there. I think that's our last slide. Speaking of crazy, did we get any traffic pictures? I that did. was crazy. I was terrified. I'm not taking my phone out in traffic there. No. <laughs> I did have one where we were walking and there was a motorcycle driving through some cows. That that might adequately describe <laughs> how that goes out because the cows had the right of way because they were ever so slightly bigger than the motorcycle. <laughs> That's about it. That's how you determine who gets to go. <laughs> well, when we when we had the wreck with the motorcycle guy, the motorcycle guy goes <laughs> stop, get out. Why'd you hit my van? <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> you know? And the guy's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Big works. And uh, so they just looked at everything and motorcycles laying in pieces everywhere. We just drove off. I mean, drove, literally just left. Hit a guy. He's walking down the street. Boom, hit him. Got out. You okay? Yeah, I'll be all right. Okay. Got in the truck and left. <laughs> We describe some of the traffic laws we have here, like stay on your side of the road, don't pass everybody you see just because you can, and that we, we went on just simple stuff like that for a little bit. Driving in America would be very hard. <laughs> they, they were like, "What?" I mean, literally, we there was a guy <laughs> there was a guy coming, and we wanted to pass. So he pulled out, and flashed his lights. That means I'm coming. You have to stop because I'm not going to. And, and I'm like, what are you? What so are you, he what drove you? off the road. So the, <laughs> he, he had room to get off the road. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, well, he, he got off. It was okay. Everywhere we went, our drivers, the pastor was 
most times in the front, and he would say, oh, you'd go to jail for that. Oh, you'd go to jail <laughs> go for that. To jail. Absolutely. <laughs> if, you, if we didn't die right there, you'd go to jail. In America, they would hit you and get insurance. There's just no <laughs> doubt. That's how we would drive. Oh, you're on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Driving must be very hard. <laughs> <laughs> it must be hard. I'm like, no, it's, it's not. It's not. <laughs> nothing compared anymore. And it's a normal Sunday for them. <laughs> We almost died every day. <laughs> it was three wrecks in one day. And they just, no no insurance, nobody, no police, nothing. Okay. Uh, come on, Tuna Swally. Do you have any questions? Where's the video of Will dancing? That's the best one. No, that one we... <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, I think that one went to the cloud. Right hey, you can dance better than I can. You're good at dancing. Oh, oh, are we going to airplay it? <laughs> hey, look, the crowd wants to see Will dance. If they want to see, smile it away. <laughs> That's how you get through a lot of awkward situations. If somebody just comes up and says something you don't... Someone asks for money, you just <laughs> wander away. Don't don't shake. Don't don't do this. Don't do this. Just <laughs> do what I do best. Just play dumb. It works every time. <laughs> you know, I don't remember exactly which one it was. Well, if you want to see that, that is some dancing. Here's how that works. The pastor said that it, it was the uh, groundhog on that meat. What's that movie? Caddyshack. Caddyshack. <laughs> That's my dance. <laughs> 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 literally, literally, that's exactly how it works. How do I do airdrop? What do I do? I've got. I've got Rick's iPad. Uh, how do I connect to the computer? Swipe up, airplay. Swipe up, airplay. Oh, not airdrop, airplay. Okay, okay, hold on. Hold on. What, what, what have I done? Swipe up. Okay, screen mirroring. The crossing iMac. Stop mirroring. Ooh, 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 ooh. ooh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Favor looks bad right there. Yeah, that's that's disturbing. Yeah, okay. Okay, we'll see. What am I doing here? We need a whistle, he. <laughs> oh, come on. There he is. Uh, here. <laughs> That's the worship service, he. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I found a toy. <laughs> I found a toy. I'm excited about that. I am excited. Okay, I, I, I could. It's, it's still doing. Mm. Lots, Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Um, where's Will preaching? Where's Will preaching? It's to be a church, to light the world. That's, That's, the, That's the best way to see it. <laughs> we could do this forever, but um, there you go. You got to see Will do the, the chipmunk, uh, not chipmunk, groundhog. Groundhog, is that what he is? Yeah. I'm all right. You don't need to worry about me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's still on. Oh, no, that, okay, is that the last one? Yes. Okay. All righty. Well, we're finished except for my closing remarks. Do you have any closing remarks? No, I'd just like to say that I'm really glad I got that opportunity because chances are I'll, I will never have that. Um, so I did get that opportunity. God was good and he provided a way to get there to see that. Um, my part was very small. These two guys are just awesome. They talk to people. They got an ability to communicate what they're thinking. See, I, 
I think things, but it doesn't come across like I'm thinking. These guys are really, they're a blessing to watch because they communicate, they connect with others really well. And uh, I'm just glad that I got to see that and, and to be a part of it one time. If, if not ever again, that one time will always stick with me. And I'm really thankful for that. Mm, thank you. Amen. How about you? Do you have any closing remarks? What a ride. Thank you for all the prayers. Thank you for all the support. Uh, I know uh, Amanda appreciated all of y'all who were, who were here. And, uh, definitely an amazing trip. Definitely saw a lot of stuff. Done. Uh, Will sells himself short every time. Uh, he, he will never know everything he did for us. Um, but God is good. He got us through a whole, whole lot. And <laughs> this trip, I, I don't know if it's because we were expecting certain things to happen that they didn't happen, or <laughs> but it, it was an amazing, incredible trip. Um, and I, I look forward to going back someday. <laughs> there was a, a... Can't get him to quit. There, there, was a, there was a moment there toward the end. Um, it kind of started when the trip took a different turn and we didn't go to the some of the places that that we were kind of hoping or I was hoping to see but but and I'm not sure because I hadn't been there before and I didn't know the situation there before but there was a situation that kind of grew and then and then God stepped in now the preacher and Jonathan because they know this situation, they are more in tune with what happened there. That probably was the reason we stayed there. God worked it this way. But I'm not totally sure of what happened, but I know that God was working there in, in that <coughs> particular church in Matisse. So I don't have a full uh, grasp on it, but I know something happened there that I witnessed that I don't even know what I witnessed, but it was God. Amen. Well, y'all can leave. I have some closing remarks to make without you. It's my brother Stacy, so we'll be in prayer for him. Um, so we, if you're on the emails, each day you got an update of where we were supposed to be and what we were doing and things like that. Here's what you don't know until right now. That didn't happen. Um, we showed up on, on a Sunday, and in order to get to where we were supposed to be going, we hired a private car, and the private car showed up and saw that it was us and remembered us and so immediately renegotiated the price of transportation for everything, and the price skyrocketed. So we said, well, we will go and use... We will go and, and get a, a public bus and take the public bus. It was an eight-hour drive to where we were going, and um, we would just use public transportation, and everything worked out great until the morning of whenever they found out that it was us. And the prices, once again, skyrocketed. So much, in fact, that, um, well, by this time, we, we were out of money that we had raised, and um, Jonathan, Will, and I had contributed money to the pot and many of you had contributed and we did the spaghetti thing we're out of that money and everything else was going to come out of out of Shanova's pocket and so um, we could not financially afford that and so I sat down and I told the pastor I said we we don't have the money to go to uh, the other places that we had planned and I said we need to come up with a plan next so he met with some of the pastors in the area that we had ministered to on Monday and they came up with this idea what if we tell the people around here that you are here and you come and you teach in the morning and do all 12 principles of church planning in the morning and then each night have a crusade what about that 
and that ended up only costing a few extra hundred dollars or something like that. I forget how much it was. I don't remember. And I was like, we can do that. We can do that. We had hired 20 people to go with us to help us with the crusade. And they had requested uh, $30 a piece. I had agreed to give them $15 a piece. Remember, the weekly wage is $12.50. So I was going to give them a little bit more than a weekly raise. Okay? But not two and a half times. But then when we were going to stay there, I didn't need all 20 people to go with us on the eight-hour trip. I, we only needed a dozen to help us with the crusade. And, you know, you get a tent. You, there's all kinds of stuff that happens in a crusade that Jonathan, Will, and I can't do. And um, so I agreed to pay for their lodging and all of their food and give them $800 of, 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 of shillings, which is $8. And I, I told Moses that. Moses came and he told the, he told the team that. And, and 13 actually stayed and agreed to that and worked. Well, an amazing thing happened. We ended up spending the entire week there in um, Kiminini. And we got to have one-on-one -on -one with pastors who were church planners, who were struggling, who were trying to do their best to, to grow a church. Young men that, that were just now starting the pastor. Men that had not yet uh, planted a church. We got to invest in them. And I'm talking about spend three, four hours a day. And um, I would say, are there any more questions? Come unto this wallet. Any more questions? And man, the questions were just coming and coming and coming. We got to dig deep in the scripture. And on Friday, we went to work at the construction site. And, um, and then I'll tell you why he went to work. Because Friday was supposed to be a day where they were going to say thank you to us. And Will's like, I don't want to be a part of that. And so he went, he went, to, he went to do something. And, um, and so we went. And a spirit moved in the camp. One of the people told the other workers that I gave Pastor Moses $30 and Pastor Moses kept 22 of it and only gave them eight. And he convinced the other workers that that's what happened. Saturday, we took the day off. So this is all undertone. This is all going on behind the scenes. Nobody asked me how much I gave them. They all believed Erastus. And so on Sunday, I preach a sermon on basically how to keep the Holy Spirit from working in your church. And... Lo and behold, it is not the sermon I wanted to preach. I wanted to preach an exciting, celebratory sermon, but I preached one of repentance, kicking and screaming the whole time because I didn't want to preach this. But, but Sunday morning, God led me to that and said, this is what you're preaching, and I literally fought it. But then when I preached it and gave a time for repentance, the church we were in, the pastor stands up and he Blast Pastor Moses for stealing money. Blasted him. And I'm sitting there with our interpreter, and I said, don't interpret anything else. I don't want to hear anything else. I'm good with this. And lo and behold, they blasted. Pastor Moses stood there, and he, he, he leaned against the pulpit as one after one one after another, came forward to accuse him of stealing the, the $22 per person, which is quite a bit of money. And then Pastor Moses said, well, since you have accused me, I am now no longer, I do not feel that I am 
worthy to be the pastor. I am going to step down from, from pastoring, being the leader, and let you figure it out. And I'm leaving. And you can have it all. And um, I told Pastor Moses, he came over there and sat beside me and I said, Pastor Moses, I don't want to be here anymore. Can we leave? And he said, he said, he said, I'm with you. And I said, I'm done. And I got up and I left. Will and Jonathan didn't really have a clue what was going on, but they came and, 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 and we all left together and I tried to explain a little bit of it. And um, my heart was hurt. We had a ministry in uh, Kiminini that the guys is on fire. I mean, people were getting saved. Some of the pictures did not, I, I did not, there's one picture of a lady who's in the, down on her knees. She's, she's an elderly lady and she's accepting Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. That's what I wanted to end with and, and, and I've messed up. I don't know where it is. It's out there somewhere. But it's that picture of this lady and she's on her knees and, and I, I asked, I said, uh, what's going on? And Moses said, said this, this lady is converting and she's becoming a Christian. And I stepped aside, took out my phone and hit it and took a picture because that's the picture I wanted to remember from, from Kimmy Nini. The fact that, that on that day, 18 new churches, new churches were meeting, 18 new churches that, that you had a part of. But, and I told Jonathan and, and, and uh, Will, guys, we got to hang on to what we did in, in Kimmy Nini. What's going on in Matisse is, is, is horrible. It's terrible. And Pastor Moses is, is being dragged under the mud and, and it's all lies and lies but Satan's got a hold of, of some people and we just need to just pray for Pastor Moses but, but report back to the church about what happened at uh, Kimi Nini and how God prevented us from going to Laudwar, prevented us from going to Kalabala and all those others but God did something amazing right there in Kimi Nini and that's what we need to focus on and so we went to Moses' house and Moses killed two chickens for us a week and a half worth of pay for us. And we choked it down, not because it was bad, because it was delicious, but we knew that man killed two chickens to honor us that day. His wife had left church earlier after the worship. She didn't want to hear me preach. She went to, her, to their home. They have a home. It's a six-room home, and three families live in the home. And they went to this home and she went there to kill those chickens and prepare them for us. She didn't know anything happened. And we showed up and her, Moses tells her, I no longer have a ministry, but I'm a church planner. God called me to plant a church. I'm going to plant a church. I'll plant another. The faith of that man but then his phone began to ring as other pastors in the area heard about what was going on. And he, he put the phones on speakerphone so that we could be a part of it. And they, the educated, they, they spoke in English. And the encouragement, the, the, everything just kept coming, just kept coming to Pastor Moses. Don't worry, don't worry. God's got you. God's going to do something. God's, don't worry. You're going to plant a church. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. In that meeting was another pastor. He's a pastor from from Nairobi and after we left he got up and spoke and asked who in this room talked to Dr. Ray and come to find out not a single person had asked me how much money I gave to Moses not a single person and he stood there and he called out the pastor and he called out the leader and he said, said, said you're wrong even if Moses stole the money, you need to find out from Pastor Ray. Well, the guy stood up and said, I know it's a fact. And he goes, so you've talked to Dr. Ray. No, but I know it's a fact. And he goes, well, then you have it. And so they came and met us in Katali because we went to um, the shop in, in Katali. And there they are on the street corner and met us. We went into a, a restaurant and sat in the very back. And there in that restaurant... The pastor that had stood up and blasted Moses, the leader, one of the leaders, asked me, How much money did I give Pastor Moses? 
And I told them, and you should have seen their faces and their eyes and their heart. The damage they had done by lying about that man. Everything that Pastor Moses had done was now crumbled because of their words. And the other pastor was there as a mediator. And he said these words. Text everybody in that building and tell them you were wrong. They had some words. They, they said some things back and forth. And he said, no. Text them now. Don't wait. Get the rumor mill started that you were wrong. Let everybody know that you, repentance means you tell them all you were wrong. So we saw what happened. We left that little restaurant and we went back to our hotel. And um, by this time it was dark. And we went to our, our little spot that we had a little little tiki hut we, that I called it that we had back there to sit and talk at night and um, Pastor Moses was supposed to come uh, with us he never showed up at 10 o'clock we went to go to bed Pastor Moses was still talking to people there was still a line of men that were coming to apologize they had traveled from Atisi to Kiminini to come and meet the man face to face and ask forgiveness. So that's what was going on, Will. <laughs> and so we stood there as they tried to repent to us and ask our forgiveness and stuff. And we were being gracious, but they didn't owe us anything. You know, this was all Pastor Moses. And we were like, thank you, thank you. But there was one. There was one that really broke my heart. He was the worship leader. His name was Peter. And whenever I heard all that was going on, I asked Pastor Moses, what about Peter? And Moses looked at me and he said, earlier in the day, he said, Peter believes I'm a liar too. But that night, one of the men that was in the line was Peter. He had gone from believing that Moses was a liar to knowing the truth, and he came to apologize to his pastor. And I know that that just, it touched me and Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan, of course, worked with Peter because Jonathan was the worship leader and everything. But just to see that, so I couldn't help it. So last Sunday I called and I said, I said, okay, what's going on? What's happened today? It was a week. And he said, you're not going to believe this, Pastor, but the entire church was packed. And I was like, really? And I said, he goes, it's more than ever before, it was packed. And all we did was repent and love each other. Praise and I was like, really? And he goes, yes. Guys, Satan hates, he hates you with a passion. <laughs> he hates you. He absolutely hates you. He hates everything that you've tried to do. He's try, he will try to thwart everything that you ever try to do. He's going to try to stop it. <laughs> but when God's people love and trust God's people, God's work gets done. That's what I saw. That's what I saw. And today they've already tried to call, and I was, I was like, I can't talk right now. Um, to give me a report on today because they need to do something because the building need they need more people they need more room they need to they need to do something there in the slums of Matizi to to reach out and to plant more churches pastor moses said i'm going to plant a church because i'm a church planner and he thought he was going to go and plant it just him and emmy just just he and his wife but instead now they're having to plant it for a different reason because the building's not big enough i mean god god is amazing when God's people get right, God is amazing. So Heath asked me, he says, is there going to be an invitation uh, this morning? And I said, yeah. Then I got to thinking, well, to do what? <laughs> and uh, here's, here's all I'm going to say. Here's all I'm going to say. I'm inviting you to do this. Will and Jonathan and I gave two weeks of our lives, and we got a blessing like you can't imagine. 
Many of you gave financially. Many of you gave financially. And you're part of that blessing. But guys, if you're here today and you have not vested, not invested, but vested in the ministry of this church, you're going to miss some more blessings. You're going to miss some more. Because we are just now on the cusp of seeing some amazing things in God that God's doing in this church. And so the, the invitation is simply to say, I'm here to sell out. I want to be a part of it. I missed this. I, I wasn't part of it. I didn't give financially. I didn't go. It was on, not even on my radar. But everything else this church does, I want to be a part of. So the invitation is this. Let's join the Crossing Baptist Church. The bars in Jackson. Terry and Amy, not the bars, B-A-R-S, but <laughs> Terry and Amy, that sounded terrible. Um, Jason and Jennifer in Cincinnati. Moses and Matisse. Isaiah and Kimmy Nini. Frank and Isaac and Nairobi. And us here. And all the ones that are to come. It's time to be a part of it. It's time to sell out 100% to it. And to be a part of what's going to happen next. I guarantee you. That, that couple sitting right there will tell you. This is a special church. Amen. This is a special place. We were talking about it earlier in Sunday school. Don't know of another one like it. Come. Invitation is for you to come. You can be seated. We're about to take up our tithes and offerings, so if you need to prepare for that in any way, please feel free to do so now. And I also want to take a moment and thank those who are already given online or through the app. I did have one final closing statement on Africa, but I thought I'd save it for now. I, I always try to describe the worship there, and, and I really can't. Like, you saw the video, and it really is that for 45 minutes, but it's not the actions, it's not the sounds, it's just the spirit that I, I, can't, I can't recreate on my own. I, I don't know how to describe it. But I can explain a little bit of the passion, a little bit of the words in, in the first song I ever learned, and still probably my favorite. It's called Mambo Salva Salva. And I could sing the song for you now, but I'll, I'll save you that. But it has an English translation, and it literally means things already better. When the Lord is on the throne, things are already better. And it's that for as long as you want to take it. <laughs> Because it's true. Things are already better. When he's in charge, when he's on the throne, which he is, by the way, things are already better. Amen. And so as our volunteers come forward, things are already better. Dear God, thank you so much. Thank you for the amazing opportunities we have every day to serve you and worship you. God, we love you. Help us to give our all for you. Amen. Okay, a couple of announcements this morning. I want to welcome all newcomers here. If you're new, we had a connection card. You should have got it when you came in. If you want to just fill it out and bring it to the back after church, we'd love to get to know you a little bit and give you a free t-shirt. Also this morning, we are decorating the church for Christmas. We'll be doing, putting up the tree and do some other decorations. You're welcome to stay. And uh, Sunday nights, we're continuing ministry with uh, Sean. Everyone's invited back at 6 o'clock for some great gospel preaching, another chance to worship the Lord. And uh, continue to... We had our missions from last week. But uh, at the end, last Sunday of every month, we'll have our mission Sunday, so something to keep on thinking about as we help support missions and the different work that we're doing. Uh, Next week is going to be the Christmas dinner after church. And then uh, at 
Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Sign ups in the back. Uh, and then Miss Genova had an announcement about a prayer opportunity. offering like we do where we do once a month. A lot of churches will pick a, a season and, and do a push for a uh, specific offering. Well, this is the season for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, which is what Southern Baptists do to support all the foreign mission field work around the world that we're involved in. Um, so I would greatly encourage you to pick up a pamphlet off of the table in the foyer. It is a pamphlet like this. And it gives you um, different stories or different information about ministry that's going on in the foreign mission field around the world. Really neat stuff. Uh, there's a message in here from the president of the International Mission Board. Uh, and just, it's a really neat way to kind of tap into what we're doing beyond ourselves. Uh, we give money, which is awesome because money creates ability for people who have given up their time to live on foreign fields, it gives them the ability to minister to others. But this will kind of give you some insight into some of the people we're supporting and what they're doing out on the field. And then we also receive this, and I'm, I'll take this up out uh, either on the bulletin board or maybe on one of the, the new stands we have. But this is got some harsh, uh, at the top it says harsh realities. There are 25% of the languages do not have scripture in that language in the world. There's a lot of other really kind of staggering uh, numbers on this sheet. This, because we give to the International Mission Board, they keep up with information about how many people are being served, uh, how many people accept Christ, there are some encouraging numbers on here as well. Um, this says that uh, 13,898 new churches were planted in 2018. I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, this is just in four fields, not in North America. Um, so there's some good highlights as well. And then there's some that, that should spur us to want to continue to give as well. So I'll post this out in the hallway where everyone can see it as well. So if you hear the name Lottie Moon Christmas Offering, know that that money is part of what we give our missions fund to at the end of each month. It is for the foreign missionaries, and this is the season when we uh, try to encourage the giving for that. And through pamphlets like this, we can be encouraged to know what's going on in some of these places and where our money is going and the types of ministries that's supporting so I encourage you to continue to give to our monthly missions offering, which includes things like this, and to also pick you up a prayer pamphlet and find out some details about what's going on. Thank you. Are we dismissed, I suppose? All right. <coughs> Shall I pray us out? Okay. Dear Jesus, we just come before you now, and we thank you so much for the opportunity to be a part of what you're doing, whether it be here in Parkerville, somewhere in another state, or even across the world, especially in Kenya. Dear Father, we are so thankful that we have been allowed a glimpse of what you're doing there and just a small opportunity to be a part of it. And we thank you so much for the lives that you're going to touch through the nationals there that are willing to be church planners and willing to give of themselves every day to be a part of your work there as well. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for this holiday season. Thank you for friends and family here and across the world. It's in your name we pray. Amen.